Welcome to another Holiness Meeting from the Trinidad and Tobago Division, including St. Vincent and Grenada. We are glad that you have joined us once more and pray God's blessing upon you. While women weep, as they do now, I'll fight. While little children go hungry, as they do now, I'll fight. While men go to prison, in and out, in and out, as they do now, I'll fight. While there is a drunkard left, while there is a poor, lost girl, upon the streets, while there remains, one dark sword. Without the light of God, I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight. I will fight. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight to the very end. Salvation Army, raise your voices. The Founder's Song tells the story of God's boundless salvation, but it won't sing itself.
Good morning, friends, and welcome to another installment of our weekly online services. And today for us in the Salvation Army is a very special day as we celebrate and recognize Founders Day. And we thank God for raising up the Salvation Army through our founder, William Booth. And today we just celebrate God's faithfulness, his goodness, and his love to us through the years. The psalmist in Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he have made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And again, we thank God for bringing us thus far because hitherto have the Lord helped us as not just an organization, but a holiness movement. That's what the Salvation Army is, a holiness movement. And we thank God that he chose to use us, unworthy vessels, to proclaim his holiness and to see his holiness demonstrated in and through our lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you as we would go into this morning's service. Lord, we thank you for every heart that is bowed here, every head that is bowed. And God, we pray that as we come before you, Lord, that we would come with a sense of purpose and a spirit of expectancy. Lord, and that as our praises ascend up to you, O God, that you would be pleased with our praises. You would be pleased with our worship, O God, and that you would come as you promised in your word. You would come and you would inhabit the praises of your people. Again, God, today we celebrate the fact that the Salvation Army was founded not just by William Booth, but even more importantly, it was founded by you. Oh, God, and we thank you that your Holy Spirit, oh, God, has enabled and empowered us through the years. Oh, God, to be a tool and to be a vehicle that proclaims the good news of salvation. So, God, we pray that you would continue to bless our army, bless our general. Bless our soldiers and bless our officers. Bless our friends, O oh God. And may you receive all the honor and the glory, even as we con th continue through this time of worship. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen.
Good morning. I'm here to tell you a bit about the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army was founded on the 2nd of July, 1865, in East End London by William Booth. He was a Methodist minister and preached at the Methodist Church where he was converted. During his time at the church, he met Catherine Mumford and together they entered into one of the most remarkable relationships in religious history. They were married in South London in 1855. Together they had eight children, two of whom became general. But by 1861, William Booth found out that settled ministry did not suit him and he resigned. Together, he and his wife became evangelists as they sought to bring salvation to the poor, the destitute, and the hungry by meeting their physical and spiritual needs. They preached everywhere, on unused burial grounds, in a room behind a pigeon shop, anywhere to fulfill his famous words, go for souls and go for the worst. How ironic that the first people to be converted to Christianity were thieves, drunkards, prostitutes, and gamblers. The organization was first known as the Christian Revival Society, then later renamed the Christian Mission. However, in 1878, William Booth thought that his mission was failing to attract the heathen masses, so he energized it by giving it the name Salvation Army. Military trappings were added over the years as the idea caught imagination, and within 10 years, the Salvation Army was established in the United States, in Canada, and in Europe. Uniforms were produced. We had a flag, military ranks, lovely music, and military orders, and William Booth himself became the general. So you may ask, why the uniform? Well, although we get mistaken for pilots, for the Red Cross, and for security officers, our uniforms are worn as an outward sign of our calling to care for the lost, tend to the sick, feed the hungry, and comfort the hurting. They remind us that we represent something bigger than ourselves. We are an army on the front line, serving with love, doing the most good, displaying our essence boldly, which means save to serve. Many programs were implemented then for the needy. Industrial schools, homes for fallen women, and recovering drugs. But it was not always smooth marching for the Salvation Army. We were met with opposition. Alcohol merchants, fearing that their business would not try if men did not drink, attacked marches against drunkenness. Salvationists were assaulted and some were even killed. Even the press and the Church of England were often hostile towards the Salvation Army. The army's motto, blood and fire, was misrepresented as glorifying in the blood of sinners and the flames of hell, when in fact it really meant the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the end, it was impossible to argue against the great good that General William Booth's ministry was doing throughout the world. It was impossible to argue. And on October 4th, 1890, at the age of 61, Catherine Booth died. And on August 20th, 1912, at the age of 83, William Booth died. Servants of God, well done. Our founders laid a firm foundation to the life-saving work of the Salvation Army, and we are now active in 131 countries. We are an international movement, and we are a part of the evangelical part of universal Christian churches. Our ministry is motivated by the love of God. Our 11 doctrines keep us faithful, and our message is based on the Bible. Our mission is simply to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs without discrimination at all times. We are a non-profit organization, and we provide a wide range of social services and emergency assistance programs, some of which include hunger relief for individuals and families, feeding programs, hamper distributions, shelters, drug rehab centers, trip stores, and emergency disaster response. Every country takes their anniversary seriously and celebrates with pride. This year in Trinidad and Tobago, we celebrate 120 years. Yay! And to God, we give the glory. 
For more information on the Salvation Army, you can visit our website at www.salvationarmy.org. May God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have joined, if you have just joined us, today is Father's Day, and we are glad that we can be together to worship. And the theme for today is that is witnesses for Jesus. Witnesses for Jesus. As Christians, we are all his witnesses wheresoever we may be. And so we invite you to worship with us today as we sing this beautiful song, 811 in our Salvation Army songbook. And um, if you don't have a songbook, you can just Google it and you'll find it online. Marching on in the light of God. Marching on, I am marching on. Up the path that the master trod. Marching, marching on. A robe of white, a crown of gold, a harp, a home, a merchant fair, a victor's palm, a joy untold, a mine. When I get there, for Jesus is my savior, hallelujah. He's washed my sins away, died for me on Calvary's mountain. I'm happy in his wondrous love, singing all the way. I'm living, yes, I'm living in the fountain. Join us as we sing. Marching on in the light of God Marching on, I am marching on Of the path that the master God Marching, marching on I walk on white, a part of gold I have a home, a path and fair A big I'm living in the fountain Marching on through the host of sin Marching on, I am marching on Victory is mine while I Christ within Marching, marching on I will walk white a crown of Marching on with the flag unfurled, marching on and marching on, pushing Christ to a dying world, marching, marching on. Indeed, we are living in, in the last days and the world is indeed dying. So we need to march on while we preach Christ. 
to the world. Let's sing together. Marching on with the flag and girls. Marching on, I am marching on. We change west to the dying world. Marching, marching on. Out of wide, across the world, I have a home, a mansion, there, a business man, a joy on gold, a mind when I get them. But Jesus is my Savior, he took my sins away. William Frank. In the army of Jesus, we've taken our stand to fight against the forces of sin. To the rescue we go, Satan's power to overthrow, and his captive to Jesus we win. We go forth not to fight against the sinner, but sin. The lost and the outcasts we love, and the claims of our King, we before them will bring as we urge them his mercy to prove. Jesus pitied our case, and he died for our race. To save a lost world, he was slain. But he rose and now lives, and his pardon he gives unto all who will call on his name. Though our trials be great, and God's enemies strong, to battle undaunted we go, for our warfare is the Lord's. And to him we belong. In his strength we shall conquer the foe. I'll stand for Christ, for Christ alone, amid the tempest and the storm. Where Jesus leads, I'll follow on. I'll stand, I'll stand for Christ alone.
pleasant morning, everyone. I'll be sharing with you on the topic, you are my witness. You are my witnesses. Let us pray. Father God, indeed, you're an awesome God, and there's none like you. Fear God, that your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts may be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You are my witnesses. In Acts 1 verse 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The loss was the main focus of Jesus' mission while on earth. In Matthew 18 verse 12, Jesus asked his disciples, What do you think? If a man has 100 sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 90 and 9 and go to the mountain to seek the one that is straying? The founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth, shares his vision, a vision which has shaped the mission of the Salvation Army. The following are excerpts of his vision. In the ocean, I thought I saw myriads of poor human beings plunging and floating, shouting and shrieking, and cursing and struggling, and drowning, and lightning and thunder. In the ocean sank to rise no more. William Booth's interpretation of this vision says, and then I understood, understood it all. It was plain enough. The sea was the ocean of life. The sea of real, actual human existence. That lightning was the gleaming of piercing of truth. The gleaming, piercing truth coming from Jehovah's throne. That thunder was a distant echoing of the wrath of God. Those multitudes of people shrieking, struggling, and agonizing in the stormy sea was the thousands and thousands of poor harlots and harlot makers, of drunkards and drunken makers, of thieves, liars, blasphemers, ungodly people of every kindred tongue and nation. To summarize the application of William's vision, your happiness and your heaven from now on will consist in going into the jaws of hell to rescue them. Similar expression was portrayed in the vision of Zechariah. He had envisioned God going into the fire to rescue his, rescue his church, highlighted in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? William Booth's vision of an ocean of despair perhaps was what, what inspired him to have penned the words of a song. Oh, boundless salvation, deep ocean of love. A popular known song as a founder's song. Verse 6 says, the tide is now flowing. I'm touching the wave. I hear the loud call of the mighty to save. My faith growing bold and delivered I'll be. I'll plunge neath the waters. They rolled over me. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 11 reads, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. St. John 3 verse 14 to 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Recently I had a vision. I saw a vision of some officers who were promoted to glory. Promoted to glory is a term used by the Salvation Army to describe the death of a Salvationist. I thought of them to be angels bearing the images of these Salvationists. They stood at attention with a bright glow on them. They were standing on the corner of the street facing outward. I went close up to them hoping that they would say something that I could take away as a meaning of this. But they said nothing. In a song sung by C.C. Wynon, Alabaster Box, you find these words. Though they spoke no words, everything they said was heard. Similar encounters appears more than once in the Gospels. We find one of them in Mark chapter 9, verse 2 to 13. Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, upon a mountain where Moses and Elijah appeared to them. Now, both Moses and Elijah belonged to a period that lasted some 4,000 years before Christ. 
Moses had had a long diet since, and Elijah was taken away to heaven in a fiery chariot. But here Jesus was transfigured. His face and clothes became dazzling bright, and Moses and Elijah were talking with Jesus, and a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Recently, a gentleman by the name of Apostle McNeil had a vision, which he believes carries a message of the universal church. He shared this, me this, this message, and I quote, Jesus has left the sanctuary, and he has gone into the streets. He will visit in the highways, the byways, and in every street corner, every home, every individual, making ready for his coming. We're in the middle of a pandemic, and an open-air meeting may be either impractical or unwise in some places. But given the spirit of William Booth, he would have certainly called for an open-air meeting online. I can only imagine what he would have said. Take our core from within our four walls and carry the salvation message into the homes and the hearts of men. Today, the church is reaching more byways, highways, and edges virtually than it has ever had. In Luke 14, verse 23, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go into the highways and the edges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. I will sup with him, and he with me. Find the body! Find the body! Find the body! Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, Salvation Army English expression used in the Salvation Army open air meetings that was first held by William Booth in 1865 when the Christian mission was born in 1878. The name was changed to the Salvation Army. Fire the it means to fire all projectiles or weapons all at once. For us, it was the drums, the tambourines, and the hallelujahs. Salvation has witnessed many persons kneeling at the drumhead, accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. Jesus told a parable in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31, of Lazarus and the rich man named Dives. In death, Dives called out to Abraham and asked him to allow Lazarus to return to life, visit his father's home where he has five of his brothers. He want Lazarus to witness to them so that they will not come to this terrible place of torment. But Abraham said unto them, Let them listen to Moses the prophets. Let them listen to them. And if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. God is calling you. Perhaps like Diabetes' brother, you too may have been turning away your ear. William Booth's burden for the salvation of souls and the well-being of others rang out ever so convincingly. William on his dying bed sent a one-word telegram to be read at the opening of the Salvation Army annual convention and the message read, Others. Others. Jesus described the weakness of the church as salt and light and branch and himself as a vine. In Revelation, John refers to the believers as two weaknesses, two candlesticks and two olive trees. We are light to salt. We are the preserving agent in the world, keeping the world from moral and spiritual decay and presenting Jesus to the world. We are light to a branch or a tree, also commissioned by Jesus to bear fruits, winning souls for God's kingdom. The church is the light which dispels darkness. Eva Morris, who was a teacher, trainer, and educator, and then, and the then major, tells a story of how her students approach her. All excited, she said. Major, something strange happened to me. I was passing several homes, and a child rushed out to me and one of, out of one of the homes and said, Jesus! And then Major quipped in a response, nothing is strange about that. You are Jesus to the people. A true witness must be willing to die for the faith. Someone said, Anything worth not worth anything not worth dying for is not worth living for. Once the believer's tenet of faith becomes a matter of life or death, his faith, faithfulness to God is tested. As in the case of Job, 
Job's response can be an exact for us in Job 30, verse 15. Though he slay me, I will trust him, but I will maintain my ways before God. On a scale to one to ten, church, how much are you willing to die for your faith? Jesus was crucified. He died for our sins, the sins of the whole world, the ultimate weakness of the Christian church. Nothing less will do. A songwriter pondered these words. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? Many witnesses of the New Testament church were martyrs for their faith, or were killed for their faith, beheaded, John the Baptist, stoned to death, Stephen, burned alive, Barnabas, dragged to death, Mark, and the list goes on. I love this particular verse in Revelation 12, verse 11. I often highlight the first portion of that verse and give very little attention to the last portion. Then I realize that I'm missing an important part. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. But there's more. And they did not love their lives to the death. Revelation 11 verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand and three score days clothed in sackcloth. There are some questions about who really are these two witnesses. Two olive trees, two candlesticks of revelation. It is not unusual that throughout the Gospels that object lessons or comparison between two objects are used to illustrate the role and function of the church and the teaching of Jesus. The vision of John of two witnesses, two olive trees, and two candlesticks represents the church made up of two groups of people, Jews and Gentiles. In Romans chapter 11, verse 11 to 31, we see where the Jews and the Gentiles are grafted into one olive tree. In other words, the two are joined into one witnesses, one olive tree, and one candlestick. In John 15, verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Branches that do not bear fruits are cut off. The branches that are cut off in Revelation represents the unbelievers. Unbeliever, whether Jews or Gentiles, will be cut off and burnt. Also in Revelation 2 verse 5. We remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. The testimony and the witness of the church will be at its peak. For three and a half years, according to John, in Revelation chapter 11. The event could be, best, could be best described as the greatest revival of the Christian church. We know that on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, God poured out his spirit on the church and gave the church power. Again, referring to the last days, in Revelation chapter 11, I tell, it tells us, God will give power to the church, to his witnesses. They will possess great power. Does that mean the church doesn't have power today or now? The Bible tells us in verse 3 that power was given to the church. The church will use a special impartation of power to do the following according to John. To prophesy for three and a half years. No one can touch the church for the spirit of prophecy or intimidate the church. Verse 5. The church will turn the world upside down for God without punishment and with impunity. The church will be given power to cause plagues on the earth so often as they will. The significance of the number seven in the Bible is described as a number of perfection or completion. It is a number of perfection or completion. It is no coincidence that completion and perfection of this verse of the church in the book of Revelation lands us exactly on the seventh verse. Revelation chapter 11 verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. It seems as though after the church experiences peak, its greatest revival, the church now hits rock bottom and is stripped of all its powers. It is only in verse 5, after three and a half years in Revelation chapter 11, when no one could stop or touch the church. But now the church has completed its assignment 
the world was allowed to do them just about anything. This is not an unusual place for the church to find itself. Look no further than the cross, where Jesus felt powerless while he hung on the cross and bled and died for our sins. In verse 9, the believers were overpowered, and many killed for their Christian faith, and their bodies lined the streets, for no one will bear them. But hallelujah to the, ble the bleeding lamb, who liveth again and again. In verse 11 and 12, the bodies that lined the streets were resurrected, amen, and ascended into the heavens into the clouds before the eyes of their enemies. Oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting on that happy morning when the ocean rise. Oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting when we meet the blessed Savior in the skies. I am the resurrection and life, Jesus says. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live and shall never die. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Believest thou this? You have heard the message. You are my witnesses. Jesus is calling you to be a part of his church, to be his witnesses. Will you accept Jesus Christ and make him Lord and Savior of your life? It is not this God's desire that any should perish, but that all through him may have eternal life. Jesus loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Patiently, Jesus is waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home! Come home! Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinners, come home. say that those who do not know your Savior Lord that they will say yes to you wherever they are and accept you as Lord and Savior of their lives we pray in Jesus name Amen
Our closing song is number 824. It says, all have need of God's salvation. If with him they've lived forever, what a promise he has given, it is written, whosoever, whosoever will may come, and who comes to him shall never disappointed turn away. Praise the Lord, tis whosoever. kingdoms and to all peoples, it is the same and shall be ever. There is no difference in the message, but to all it is whosoever. come to yet the end of yet another online broadcast and we thank you for sharing our worship experience with us today we pray that you would have indeed be blessed we pray that some word from the message this morning would have would have you know caught your attention and that you will be reminded that Jesus is the same yesterday today and forevermore and that he saves he keeps and he satisfies. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are indeed grateful to you for the opportunity that we had to lift up your petitions today. We thank you for all that we have been able to accomplish through this broadcast today. We pray for those who have listened and those who will continue to listen throughout the week, that God, you will be with them in a special way. Help them to know that you are the all-seeing God that underneath are your everlasting arms. We think of those who have been inflicted with the
COVID-19 virus, we pray that even now, that Father, you will help them to know that you are with them, that you are the great physician, that you are the sympathizing Jesus. We thank you for all that you have done throughout this broadcast, and we pray as we go through the week that is ahead, that we will be remembered, be reminded that you are God, and that you own, you are only always a prayer way. We ask all these mercies in no other name but the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. For our benediction this morning, I want to read to you two verses from a song in a songbook, song number 509, and it's known to us in the Salvation Army as the founder song. O oh, boundless salvation, deep ocean of love, O oh, fullness of mercy, Christ brought from above, the whole world redeeming, so rich and so free. Now flowing for all men, come roll over me. And now, hallelujah, the rest of my days shall gladly be spent in promoting his praise, who opened his bosom to pour the sea of boundless salvation for you and for me. Have a great week, and we pray that as you watch this broadcast that you will like, give a comment, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you, and God bless you.